Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the English Shooting live stream. Of course, if you are watching this after we've gone live, then it's uh, just a normal video, just quite a long one. But thank you uh, for joining, whether you're joining live or uh, afterwards. Of course, please don't forget to like the the video, hit that like button, it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, if you enjoy these videos, if you enjoy watching these channels, subscribe because that does make the biggest difference. But of course, this is interactive. If you wanna get involved, please use the chat section below. Let me know what you think of the topics that we're discussing, have your thoughts heard. And of course, it's an opportunity for you guys to raise uh, any questions that you want, any topics that you wanna bring up and discuss, maybe pick my brain on certain things. Of course, my main passion with this channel is trying to get as many new people into this sport. So if there's anything that is putting you off or anything you're not sure about, then this is the opportunity and I will try and answer as many questions as possible. But I hope you've all had a fantastic week since the last live stream. It's been uh, once again a fairly quiet week but we still have a fair amount to discuss. Of course it has everything to do with firearms licensing because when isn't there a week to talk about firearms licensing and maybe things that they could be doing differently or some cause for concerns um, on what they're getting up to. So uh, the main theme which we will be getting on to very shortly uh, is actually the final decision when it comes to your medical fitness and chief constables seemingly knowing more than some medical experts out there. Uh, in terms of GPs and medical experts, there's been a scheme launched from Basque, which is hopefully overcoming the difficulties that people are having with their GP forms. We've got a little bit of an update with the so-called gun grabs that are going on in Devon and Cornwall. Of course, there's been a number of people under that area under that firearms licensing team that have had knocks at all sorts of hours in the evening and morning told to surrender their guns with absolutely no explanation and we're, we're seeing the first appeal going through with that so that's going to be incredibly important the outcome of that appeal and uh, yeah we'll be discussing that more in more depth and of course it's February we haven't had it for well, feels like years now, but the British shooting show is very fast approaching uh, and there's some great news all around that. And I wanted to tell you my plan so far for that because a lot of you guys do like to come and grab me and I, I love getting to put a face to the username uh, and have a, a chat face to face at these shows. So we'll be touching on that um, later. But on to the main, the mainstream, the main topic for this evening so gp forms and your medical record has come up quite a bit recently there's been a load of issues with it so if you don't know sort of the the backstory is that they with the recent change in the um, the guidance the statutory guidance given to police forces and firearms licensing it is now mandatory for you to supply a GP form with your application. Now, prior to it becoming mandatory and the new statutory guidance coming in, it was a requirement for many other forces. Back when I first applied for my certificates, it was all an automated pro process. You didn't actually get involved with it at all. The police would sort of just send them your GP a notification or may if they want to be a little bit more proactive give them a call and get them to check your medical records but that all went on behind the scenes you actually didn't have to do anything you just you know it was all taken care of between the GP and, and the police but with this statutory guidance coming in a lot of police forces started requiring GP forms even before you submitted your application and I even fell 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 foul of this submitting a, an application for a coterminous certificate not realizing that you needed to put the gp form in and they actually sent everything back so that was a that was a good one always read the small print first and there's been loads of politics around these gp forms mainly because the gps or the like the main association of gps all agreed to it the police like basque 
all the firearms licensing stakeholders were like, yeah, cool, we, we know where we're at with this. And then the GP sort of turned around and went, actually, no, we're not taking any liability or responsibility for it. And unfortunately, that hesitation or that fear of being ultimately responsible as as far as the GPs see it uh, stopped a lot of GPs filling out forms or attempting to charge ridiculous sums of money to do it well, well if I'm going to be liable for this I might as well make a sweet penny I mean that sort of that doesn't really say that they're the sort of character or the sort of sort of person that you really want in a medical profession ah uh, yeah I don't really agree with it but if you're going to pay me a shitload of money I'll, I'll do it anyway and it's now unfortunately led us down to this this path where the police have had to specifically come out and clarify that they are ultimately responsible which of course this isn't anything new the police have total accountability when it comes to dishing out certificates and the final call is theirs but in having to clarify that they have all accountability and they assume, they have the final decision and you know their the liability lays with them this seems to have maybe transcended a bit more to the police believing that they're actually medical experts and to to give you a bit of context of how things have changed more recently uh, i believe the when i did the gp form video and i talked about getting it filled out and what they're looking for and um, just some general guidance on it there is a, a full video of that on the channel um, this was the old gp form and i say old because of course there is now a new one that i recently found and i only saw this a couple of days ago because somebody was asking me where you actually found it so this is what it used to look like now it gives a little bit of instruction let's say an explanation to the gps of what what they're doing it for and what they should be looking and looking at and all this and the fact that it's not opinion it has to be a statement of fact and it really was a box ticking exercise do they have any of this on their medical record and then please give details um, below so that the police can make the decision and this was well, it's not exactly the most reassuring because the police aren't medical experts. So you can sort of forgive in the situation where they go, well, yes, there are records of depression with this individual. There are, um, you know, they may have anxiety. Um, the, you know, of course, if they are continuously suicidal, it's maybe a little bit more clean cut. But mental illness um, and even physical health issues is not a clear blank no to getting a firearm certificate here in the UK so the police have always had to try and read between the lines and if there is something on your record and they want to be you know safe rather than sorry you can sort of forgive them for going well we're ultimately responsible here at the end of the day so we're going to take the safe approach and then if they deem if the applicant when they refuse wants to take it off to appeal then they have that option and they can really get into the nitty-gritty and hash it out but the main spark of talking about this this evening is the the worrying development that it's not just the police making a let's say 50 50 decision and and trying to weigh things up and using all of the information that is provided there's been a number of people that have got in contact recently um, and i'm not going to go into too much detail because uh, a lot of it's of a highly personal nature but people that have had issues with certain mental and even physical health markers on their medical records they've gone to their gp said do you have any concerns i'm applying for my firearm certificate or shotgun certificate the gp has turned around and said uh, no it was either an acute episode or it was a very mild episode or no i don't feel that you have any danger you know, you're a danger to anybody i would fully support your application and even some people having to go as far as using psychiatrists and having full mental health evaluations done which have supported that they are in a good state they are they are of you know of fit mind and of no danger to anyone and the chief constable have in effect 
overruled those decisions or overruled those recommendations. Now, of course, that's completely within the powers. They're not necessarily overstepping the boundary here. They still have the right to do that. But you have an abundance of trained, highly qualified medical professionals actually not, not just doing a tick box, tick, tick box exercise and saying you know yes they've got this yes they've got that no they don't have uh, they don't have these um they're actually giving their medical opinion and their professional opinion that this person is fit what then qualifies the likes of firearms licensing and a chief constable that have no medical background that they, they they're not a medical expert to then go against what other people are saying again it's in their right to do so in the way that the law works and the process in terms of the final decision that makes uh, that that is made but i think that's an incredibly slippery slope that we're heading down because if they do have that power to completely ignore medical professionals then how are you ever going to appeal it so you you know the chief constable is going to sit there and say in my experience because of these issues i still don't think they're fit oh yeah but all these people say that they are fit well no i have final decision and in my experience i don't think they are so there's a lot of people being just completely blacklisted based on the medical decision or medical opinions of police officers who have no medical expert um you know, well they're not medical experts they have no medical training and to, to show you the shift on this this is the new gp form from uh hampshire so completely different to what I showed you um, a moment ago. And this is this is what sort of confirms it all. Um, please note that the police are not seeking your opinion on my suitability to hold a firearms certificate, as the responsibility for this decision lies with the police. They require only a factual response from a suitably qualified GMC registered doctor based on my medical records. So this paragraph here, or this change to this paragraph, whereas previously it was only about please keep it to a statement of fact and don't give opinion, they have specifically added in um, the responsibility for this decision lays with the or lies with the police, and that it's not an assessment of suitability from the GP. So uh, really, I think who we have to blame for this are actually the gps the the police have have had no choice but to be the ultimate decision makers and to start making medical assessments or, or making decisions based on medical records because the gps want nothing to do with it and i know basque is doing a lot behind the scenes politically to try and overcome this and to get the gps more involved maybe it's going to take a a uh, change of law maybe there's going to have to be more statutory guidance issued towards the gp to actually force them to do their bloody jobs but in not wanting to have any responsibility and to wash their hands of it it's passed that on to the police and you have to question whether the police are actually trained and qualified to be making those decisions and it and it works both ways they can be too harsh and not give out certificates which is what a lot of people contact me about but what about the other case in making the wrong decision if they don't have any medical expertise if they're not medically trained experts how can they be making an educated decision based on somebody's medical records surely the ultimate maybe not liability but the ultimate decision in terms of mental or physical fitness has to lie with the gps they are the ones at the end of the day that are medically trained so i don't know i've I, i've seen a number of people um in the chat say that they've had um they've had issues very earlier on um but yeah again a uh, you know just to say a big thank you for everyone for for joining um and um 
getting involved with the stream so it was what's a skibble shanks uh, definitely mine were taken with one condition of return a satisfactory gp report it was issued straight away with no concerns and they still haven't returned them now that's they're saying that there was an anonymous there was anonymous information from your employer who was questioning my suitability um has to be looked at and they can't tell me what the accusations are this is a whole nother separate issue <clears throat> about anonymous accusations it, it's affected myself it's affected many other people that i i know and it's it's nothing to do with the gp forms but i've seen it a number of times that police have or firearms licensing have almost hid behind these anonymous accusations they won't even tell you they say you know due to some accusations you're not suitable okay well i'm sorry you're effectively um accusing me of something here and you know normally within your law you have um the right to face your your accuser so firstly who is, who are they um what is the accusation and allow me to give the opportunity to be able to defend myself and potentially clear my name but they won't give you any information at all and they just sort of hide behind this wall and it's very difficult to then do something uh do something about um pete smith uh we did cover this in um oh, by the way let me know what you think about um the this gp situation um you know use that chat box and get involved in the conversation is is this just part and parcel well it is just part and parcel of being um, a firearms owner in the uk what could potentially be done about it or you know maybe bass need to try a lot ha harder because it's well it's having a, a much bigger adverse effect than it already was so in regards to uh, your question about hampshire starting up again uh we we touched on this last week but this was the, um, I, I talked about this, this was posted in one of the groups on Facebook. Somebody emailed Hampshire Firearms Licensing to ask whether, well, when they will be starting up again. Of course, Hampshire Firearms Licensing, at, due to COVID, uh, have shut down all applications. So they're not processing any new or, or receive or even taking in any new applications at the moment and have even returned those that we're currently in so yes they're not even going to consider opening or they're not even they're only going to review the situation on the 20th of march so you know when i was talking about this last week it was pretty much two months away so what what are they like literally what are they waiting for you've got the prime minister telling everybody to stop work from home and get back into uh you know normal life and number of firearms are like oh no a couple of a couple of months more holiday please that would be absolutely fine um so that's that's what's going on with hampshire at the moment unfortunately urban space monkey yet yeah, devon and cornwall have told pre-existing applicants they don't need to do the forms at present i mean to be fair devon and cornwall is not maybe the example to be led by um i i think they m very much have the uh, you know saying it can go two ways you can get counties that are too strict and maybe making the wrong decision uh, medically and not giving out uh, the, the wrong medical decision and not giving out certificates and then you get places like plymouth well devon and cornwall that maybe the other way they they're a little bit too eager to give out certificates uh, Ryan Bratt, not sure if my autism would be a problem. It would definitely be something that would be declared on your um, GP form. They would, would, they would absolutely have to. I know you can, uh, like, it gets really tricky because autism is is not a is not a mental Ill illness. It's a it's a learning, well, learning difficulty or specific learning difficulty, uh, but it's still most likely to come up. And I certainly would declare it yourself this this is sort of the crazy thing as well is it it's a two-pronged thing because during your application you still have to declare this yourself just because they're going to the doctor or your gp and getting them to fill out this form you still have to declare all of your known mental or physical illnesses i would 100 percent declare the autism because it's all well and good getting into an argument about whether it's a, a mental illness or it's a a learning difficulty um 
but I think I think actually there's an argument that it's neither of those as well, um, or behavioural, behavioural, if not behaviour. Anyway, um, regardless of of what it's ca- categorised with, it's it's all well and good having that argument with the police. But if they feel that you haven't declared something, it then becomes about honesty. So, well, I didn't think I had to declare it. Well, we think you did You, you did need to declare it and you haven't, so we're just going to refuse your application on not declaring um, declaring everything. Uh, low Carbon Chris. Uh, low Carbon, do you have a brother called High Carbon Chris? <laughs> uh, I've always had to submit... Um, I've always had to submit a Go report as I suffer anxiety, depression, MD never ha- and never had a problem Th- that's the thing is a lot of people going back on the declaring everything there's some people that will choose not to declare something thinking that it's going to be the be all or end all and if it comes up there's no way they're going to get a certificate so they might as well try and hide it and actually it's not a problem uh, at all i'm not not necessarily trying to downplay here um depression and anxiety and, and mental illnesses when it comes to firearms ownership but there's, for lack of a better word, there's many flavours of mental illnesses and not all lead you to being a danger to yourself or others. There's a lot that are completely manageable and people live happy, normal existences. Um, you know, maybe happy and depression in the same sentence isn't, isn't the best combination, but, uh, you know, they, they go on to live fine lives, um, you know, they're, and they're not a danger to themselves or a danger to anyone. So I've, what's going on at the moment and what scares me mostly is because for many, many years, my advice to people has always been, if you've got any mental health issues or you've got anything medically that you think may pose a problem, going for a firearm or shotgun certificate then speak to your gp and i have i don't know how many times i have said the phrase look at the end of the day police are not medical experts your gp should have the final say when it comes to your medical suitability uh, or your you know the your, your suitable health and that just seems to be completely 180 and and it's it just seems very illogical uh, it, it's just for me it opens the police to even more liability at the end of the day whilst the liability and accountability doesn't lie with the gps they would be the police would be very hard pushed to be accountable or liable if they have a gp or other medical expert giving their recommendation that this person is fine like can you imagine how that goes in court let's let's just imagine that you know, with Plymouth, right? Let's, you know, let, okay, let's ignore the um, the worrying YouTube videos. Let's ignore the um, the arrests and the allegations of assault and, and all that. Let's, that's purely the fact that he had uh, clear mental health issues, um, anger management problems and this, that and the other. Let's just say in that case, he had a psychiatrist or a GP that wrote a report saying, I absolutely feel that this guy is fine and i would support his application right now that is what plymouth would be using that's what devon and cornwall would be using whilst the ultimate accountability does lie with them if they've got a a piece of writing they've got a letter from a medical professional saying that everything is fine medically well what more are they to think and you know it gets on to this the, the discussion of other agendas why would the firearms licensing department or why would a chief constable be specifically going against the recommendation if there wasn't some sort of drive to reduce certificates there wasn't some sort of you know national arse covering going on in the wake of um of plymouth it doesn't seem to make any sense because they're actually they're they're opening themselves up to more liability because if they're turning down somebody that is perfectly fit and that person then chooses to appeal, then they're on the hook for a fairly expensive day in court. Although, at the end of the day, it's not their money, so who cares, right? Brian, Daniel, you really like letting everyone know you're a mod. 
is it really necessary to say it every time you come on i yes i think it is i think it's it Look, leave him alone. It makes it makes Dan happy, and I'm appreciative of Dan's modding abilities most of the time. Uh, you have to you have to have a GP report for all grants and renewals now, and it's your responsibility slash problem to get. And we'll be getting on to that problem in in a sec. Uh, war is hell. Uh, yes, I guess so. Uh, hey, Callum, what's the process to send a firearm to the manufacturer for repair? Or, or repair center for repair slash modification in the UK. Uh, so this was briefly covered in the video that went up out yesterday talking about converting section one and section two shotguns between section one and section two. A firearm certificate holder is not able to mail um, a gun or send off a gun. It has to be done through an RFD, a registered firearms dealer. So funnily enough, the one service in the UK, because I think TNT used to do it, but the one service in the UK that will ship firearms is Parcel Force. But you need to be a registered firearms dealer to open an account with them and, and legally sending it off as well. You have to be a registered firearms dealer. So in terms of sending one back to a manufacturer for repair, uh, either you have to drop it off to the factory in person or you will have to get uh, an RFD to send it off on your behalf. Fairly good practice, well, fairly um, routine. A lot, a lot of it happen. It happens all up and down the country regularly. Um, you know, like it will depend. Well, I would say if you're having to send off a gun for repair, is it still in warranty? Why not go back to the gun shop that you bought it from, see if they can repair it, if it doesn't absolutely need to go back to the, the manufacturer, because that is going to be a, a lot longer. Uh, but the best example that I can give is, is GMK. GMK are the importer for uh, Beretta, Benelli, Stoger, Tika, Seiko, and a whole other load of stuff. Uh, but they have a central sort of service and repair house um, at their main location. Uh, so any Beretta or Benelli, let's say shotguns that need to go back for repair, they're not sent back to Italy, they're sent to GMK and they're fixed there. But the RFDs will have accounts with them, they will have, you know, if they sell Beretta or Benelli, they'll be able to send guns back and forth to them via Parcel Force um, and facilitate that whole process for you. Oh, and it's time for the uh, English shooting beer review. Um, so toast, here's to change. Well, here's, here's to change in our firearms licensing system because God knows we need it. Session IPA, citrusy, hoppy, planet saving. Oh, yeah, well, it, it is a brew dog. So, you know, they. is it a brew dog? No, it might. Oh, I don't think it is actually. Well, I do have a brew dog, so you can slate me. No, it is a, it is a brew dog. Again, they were bought for Christmas. So I don't, I don't, I don't condone any of the organisations that they support. I specifically don't shop in Lush anymore after that saga. Like old subscribers of the channel will well remember um, my little vendetta against Lush, um, and uh, and unfortunately Holly is is very Lushless now, because because uh, I said you know if you want to go in and buy it, fine, but you won't find me anywhere near one of their shops. Brian, it's more to let people know they shouldn't be a dick and start mouthing off. I will remove and remove and remove and mute people. Yes, yes, he will. Daniel has no issues in swinging that ban hammer. Maybe that's maybe that's what I need to get you for your birthday. Like actual physical ban hammer. That's what the mods do. No shit, Sherlock. <laughs> oh, don't piss him off. He has he has the ability to ban you. Like. I, I don't have the cognitive ability to watch what Daniel's getting up to. That's a lot of that's a lot of trust there, Daniel. Colin Penfield, it's better to declare everything, even if you think it's irrelevant or not, um, uh, or not applicable, because otherwise they get you for providing false or misleading information. Absolutely, exactly what I um, said earlier. The other big one that people seems to, to seem to get their knickers in a twist on, and I know we covered this um, last week, is is speeding tickets and speeding fines and stuff like that. Um, 
you know, yes, if you have an excessive amount uh, or, you know, you're caught doing 130 in a 20 zone, then yes, that's going to look negatively. But if you're caught doing 130 in a 20 zone, you have a criminal record like that's that's prison time right there uh, if, if you're caught. Um, but like speeding fines, you know, doing 35 in a 30, um, f- you know, 45 in a 40, stuff like that. Uh, there's so many people that have got in contact with me and said, oh my God, am I going to get refused because I have this one speeding ticket from four years ago? And I go, don't worry about it, declare it, it probably won't come up. And lo and behold, they come back and go, nope, they didn't even talk about it. And and what I said is, you know, previously the speeding tickets that I've declared haven't haven't even come up in, in conversation. So again, don't get caught up on the little things. They're not they don't expect this sounds that sounds a bit um, contradictory but they don't expect everyone to be perfect you know it's it's just a matter of life we are human people make mistakes it's about what you've then done to correct those mistakes it, it's about whether there's a habit uh, or a pattern of behavior uh, it the one off speeding ticket the um the 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 one call from a neighbor about you know loud banging um which could be a it could be a whole myriad of things that but you know these these small one off instances they don't they, they don't usually cause for concern so it is always better to declare too much than not enough um, and i and i have known i know people that left something off not maliciously not intentionally just literally slipped their mind it was 5 10 15 years in the past they they just literally didn't remember it it's then come up, they've done a check, they found it, and they've gone, well, hang about, what about this? And they've gone, I've, I literally just forgot. I honestly forgot, and that's it. No, we now can't trust you. We, you know, this, in some ways it does, it's a little bit worrying because it's like, why, the, the reason the police have, the reason the police need you to declare everything is because maybe they don't have the resources or the time to actually go through and check everything. Uh, so, I mean, this this there's one specific case where the guy, um, he lost his tickets. He had a firearm certificate. That was fine. Went for an RFD. They did additional checks for an RFD, which I'm sure you can imagine. Then they found it. So the guy had had an FAC for years, no problem at all. But as soon as they found this bit that he'd left off his, his application form um, in, in going for an RFD, they they sacked him off for both the RFD and the certificate. So it, it sort of shows that they hadn't gone that deep on the firearm certificate application initially, and it was only found when they went through for an RFD. So, you know, the police want honesty because they, they want to see that everything's declared so they, they can make a full educated opinion and then completely ignore the medical professionals, but make a full educated opinion uh, and decision on your suitability. And as soon as they get the win, get any win that you're not telling them everything, that you're not trustworthy, then that's sort of like numero uno in getting your your certificate refused or your application uh, refused. Skimble Shanks, the firearms licensing guide for chief officers 2021 has given the firearms licensing units too much prying powers, asking the opinions of other others who you are bound to find someone who doesn't want you to have them uh fun fun fact and a word of warning so you might think you know if they go and ask if they go and ask enough people they might go and find somebody that doesn't like you uh yeah it may come even closer than that make sure the references that you put down are actually on board with you having firearm certificate and some of you may laugh you go well who the fuck would put a reference down that is going to give you a negative reference for your application. Um, it happens. <laughs> you know, the police phone up and go, "Yeah, you've um, you've chosen to be a reference for this person's firearm application." They go, "Yep." And they go, "What do you think? Should this person be allowed to have firearms?" Like, Absolutely not. Oh, okay then. Right. Thank you very much. You know, and you can imagine how that application then went. So yes, the the new guidance, as I've said, it's it's not. We needed more guidance. We needed. Well, we needed more guidance. We the the police needed a better sh- uh, hymn sheet to be singing from. Unfortunately, I think they've gone they've not gone in the right direction. I've covered this a million times. 
yes, all the worrying things like looking into your financial records and, and stuff like that, a lot of people arguing that it's going way too far. I do understand it. You know, if you're in a if you're in an unstable financial position, that could lead to you becoming an unstable person. We have seen that many times before. But it was it was less about guidance of what they should be doing. Uh, how they should be doing it, which is what they needed, clear set out guidance and just opening up the scope of what they should be, you know, what, what areas they can use for you to not be suitable. And that's what it very much felt like. It wasn't, it wasn't actually guidance to the police or helped the police in, in making that decision. It was giving them more tools to be able to say no. Um, and I'm pretty sure we're going to see further changes from it in, in the the wake of Plymouth. They still decided to go out with that statutory guidance and not um, hold it up any further from the findings of, of Plymouth. But the findings of Plymouth are going to come out at some point and they are going to make changes to that guidance going forward. So on uh, continuing the topic of... GP forms, of course, the, the bigger issue that has uh, plagued us for a long time is GPs not wanting to, or flat out refusing and conscientious, conscientiously objecting to doing GP forms or charging, I've, I've heard fees of upwards of £500 for it when a lot of you guys have said your GPs have done it for, for free or have charged a, non, a nominal fee of say 30 or £60, well, Basque have put in a serious amount of effort, in my opinion, to give another avenue. Now, the caveat to all of this is it is only for Basque members, but there is another avenue if you are having issues with obtaining your GP forms. Now, I've said a million times that you can go to Shotgun Medicals or you can go to MediCert. They are uh, professional companies that... Out, basically outsource the work to, to other GPs that want to do some private work on the side. Oh, oh, what it would be to be a GP with all that, all those different revenue streams. But uh, yeah, basically it's a company that seeks out GPs that are willing to do the work. I think they're around the 60 to 80 pound mark and that's been around for a while. But Basque have provided a facility for their members to also get uh, their GP forms filled out if they're having difficulties. Now, I hope um, that it isn't just uh, necessarily a money-making scheme and that the fees, if any, you would you would hope that based on the wording on, of this, the, the GPs are doing this to help people and maybe there's not fees or it is a nominal fee. Um, but basically, Basque solution uh, is to provide their own medical verification. Uh, so they've identified a number of Basque members who are doctors uh, and in turn for, uh, from medical panels to provide, uh, but basically they will go and do your medical form uh, for you. So it's, it's not necessarily pitched as a service. It's more of a get out of jail free card. It's available there if you've exhausted all other options although you have to like it it does baffle me that a, uh, an organization as big as basque doesn't go to somewhere like shotgun medicals or uh, medicer and go look we can we could strike a deal here you know you provide the same price for your you know for our members but give us a 10 percent kickback for every member you we send to you but they've they've gone through they found bass members that are gps that have said if you know if a member experiences a problem obtaining obtaining medical verification or their gp demands an exorbitant fee they can contact basque firearms team uh, but it's got this really like quite obvious note please note this is an important basque membership benefit and therefore is not available to non-members so this isn't meant to be a long-term solution this is very much i believe a short term whilst they're trying to get the gps to do their job and fully get them on board this is just a hopefully a temporary thing whilst they're sorting uh, all of that out but they they don't make it easy do they i mean the, the gp form to begin with is is a massive barrier and as we have seen has caused a lot of issues and 
it's the current sort of backbone of the argument of the likes of Hampshire firearms licensing and shutting down. Oh, well, you know, because save the NHS and relieving pressure from GPs who are doing vaccinations, we don't want their valuable time being spent on uh, GP forms. You know, it's not like they have an evening or two that they could sit down and do them and when they're not doing vaccines. But anyway, and it's not like GPs are doing vaccines 24 seven. Um, the government doesn't have enough money to be paying them 24 seven for vaccines, but they, they're using that excuse. So the, the, the GP form is, is just continuously presenting barriers. It just it really needs to get sorted out. And again, with this more recent development of the police just completely ignoring it in the end anyway like what's the actual point and you're going to go to your doctors or again it's not meant to be their assessment of suitability but you're going to go to their doctors they're going to write notes saying yes mild depression but it was an acute episode no 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 worries here my medical my factual medical um oh, it's still opinion isn't it but i don't know like how how do you get around how do you get a doctor to medically state well they can they can just a statement of fact the statement of fact is they don't pose a danger to anybody there we go but the police are still choosing to ignore that do you think they only issue licenses to triple vaccinated oh, d just don't even go down that path can you imagine can you just imagine for one second what would happen if they said yeah, no, yeah, you you can't you can't have a firearm certificate unless you have unless you're fully vaccinated. Like, I mean, I I am not one for conspiracy theorists. Like, I don't I don't get that whole premise. It's like yes, there's maybe hidden agendas, but not necessarily conspiracies. Or they're sort of one of one of the two same, right? But that would just I think there'd be a very a lot of very unhappy people um if uh, if that ended up happening evan space monkey our fee for a medical certificate is 60 quid 50 quid for basque and cpsa members did it say it on there did i miss that or oh, what are you quoting I thought shotgun medicals did give bass discounts. Our fee for medical. Oh, uh, okay. Well, no, they give discounts. But what I'm saying is, instead of going through all of the bass members and finding doctors that want to do it, well, you've got MediCert. So, like, why aren't they? It it almost it, like fair play. They found another solution. They found another, um, you know, way to get around this problem. But like, there there already is one. It's almost like you know wouldn't that because we've already got medicert why not just spend the time and energy trying to eradicate this problem entirely um the doctors don't do the vaccines near me it's the nurses and even less of a reason that they should be shutting up shot and not giving out certificates right unfortunately the medical professions uh, medical profession is riddled with left-wing politics and is generally very anti-gun finding an unbiased doctor might be impossible i'm not going to say impossible because there's a lot of doctors that go out and shoot uh, a lot of uh, mps as well but yeah i at the end of the day normally for a degree you go and spend three or four years at university and it's well known that universities generally of very very left-wing environments doctors go and spend seven or eight years in that environment so it sort of sort of lends to you know the the left-wing element maybe rubbing off a bit more within the medical professional uh, medical profession there's also i mean you, you get into the sort of demographic of medical professionals it's also uh, highly densulated with uh, highly dense no it's highly populated densely populated with women basically the medical profession doctors obviously nurses um a disproportionate amount of women in those positions than men you know and you know we all we all know wives don't like guns <laughs> like have you tried bringing a new gun into the house 
like why the wife is there you know although i don't have a wife and you know i don't bring guns at, well you know air guns you know I'm, I'm allowed those um but yeah so maybe it just follows through into the medical profession Gez Roberts joking. What are you joking about? <laughs> so on to yet more positive and actually let's have a, a we're gonna instead of the whole firearms and Devon and Cornwall, we've been talking about that quite a bit. Um something else that I did somebody did tag me in the Discord and it was like a day after they had tagged me and I didn't um didn't have a chance to really jump on it. But there has been um speculation that there's potentially a new UK legal gun out there. I'm not so sure. Uh, so obviously there's been SHOT Show recently and the ingenious guys at Frankly Arm Armory, Franklin Armory have been incredibly busy and they've released something that they refer to as their digital action. Now I'm gonna play this at full speed and then I'll play it um, at a reduce because really to see what's going on. But you can see it looks like a normal PCC, but watch the bolt as he's pulling the trigger. Now, I haven't had time to really dig into the the UK definition, like the actual black and white dish definition of semi-auto. Now, what he says is that it's not classed as semi-auto, but of course, what he's referring to is the US definition of semi-auto. Now. I always use the sort of blanket expression of a semi-auto in the UK is defined as one round per one pull of the trigger, which this one would still meet. But with the the likes of, and, and it's not as clear and black and white, um, that, you know, it's about self-loading and what's the definition of, of self-loading and things like this. Whichever way you cut it, I really don't think that this is we're going to see this in the UK in in anything other than section 5. Um it's going to be a toy for only the few. Um so I'll slow down that footage and so you can see it operate it operate in um slow mo, but it's basically like a double action rifle. So pulling the trigger, it pulls back the bolt. It then releases um, chambers around and then fires all under the trigger but the the one thing in terms of the legal definition of semi-auto in the UK um, let's see it's... so yeah it's releasing that bolt and and fire and you know when it closes it is and, and locks it it is it is firing so the the one that I think at the very least this is going to fall under is actually the 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 new amendments that came out due to the lever release and mars which says something along the lines of if it chambers around using energy stored by gas or a spring well if you think about it that bolt is coming back and it's being released what is driving it forward it is energy stored under a spring so yeah, uh, I think there was a lot of people that were being very optimistic in, in the Discord. Uh, that's the UK shooting Discord. I'll drop the um, I'll drop the link, the invite link. It's if you don't know what Discord is, don't let me don't make me explain it for another fifty thousandth time. Just follow that link and immerse yourself. Um, but yeah, I think people were being quite optimistic that oh my god, this is like the the, the get around to the Mars, which was a get around. Like, I really don't think it is. And of course, and this was talked about in the Discord, um, the police's favorite line, and also the judge's favorite line when it comes to, you know, let's say gray areas of this, it's not in the spirit of the law. So, you know, we all know that the basic definition of a semi-auto is one pull of the trigger for what well you get one round for every pull of the trigger of course in full bore we're not allowed to have that under section one it's section five this you know you try like the way you've got to look at it try explaining this to a, explaining why that isn't a semi-auto to a judge or a jury now of course frankly our armory are able to do that within the us that's 
probably because the definition of semi-auto over there is, is maybe more defined or it is, it is defined differently. But a judge is just going to go, I, I think at the very least, if you were to get one of these on a firearm certificate, well, first of all, you've got to get somebody to import it. Good luck with that. And you get it on your certificate. As soon as the police see, see a video of that thing, you're going to end up in court. At the very least, they're going to still take it off you. Go, nice try. Uh, we're not going to prosecute you because it's so grey, but no, no more. These these are expressly prohibited now. So I just don't think, you know, if, if maybe if Mars and Leave release hadn't been taken away, that might have sat there with them. But with the whole Mars and Leave release debacle, there's just there's absolutely no way that those are, are going to be um, are going to be legal. That that carbine is an analogous in operation and um, to a long barreled revolver. Is it though? <laughs> because a long barreled revolver, it doesn't. First of all, it doesn't load from a magazine. Like the rounds aren't being loaded into a chamber every shot. Yes, the the bullets coming out. You know coming down a barrel but i don't think see how you could that could be compared or, or a long barrel revolver could be used as justification for that in terms of you know the expression self-loading how do you how is that not self-loading you know yes it's not maybe automatically self-loading you know and where does that is the semi-auto the act of semi semi automatically self loading um or is it the fact that self load and again that's as i said i haven't had the time to really dive into the nitty gritty black and white of uk firearms law but the whole thing about storing energy in springs i think that's there's that going on and also how you can say that's not self loading because you've you've effectively pulled that trigger for you know you're pulling the trigger and yes the trigger's still locked back but then that action the bolt shutting and chambering around you're not doing that mechanically right the mechanical nature of that gun is pulling the tr pulling the bolt back with the trigger when you when it goes that is doing it semi-automatically right it's you've you've manually pulled it back that far and then it's then it's going forward but wasn't there that whole thing with like with straight pulls and under the spring oh oh i don't know i don't know i thought it would be an interesting point to break out and talk about uh, like if you have if you have a side charging rifle that when you pull back and let go of and it loads around is that then semi-auto is that self-loading i wish i'd thought about this pre-stream you know like literally seeing my mind work now i know it's not pretty i know like i'm i, I apologize um that's actually looking at it that way it's actually quite an interesting point Hmm. and like genuinely happy i didn't see that comment literally just seen that comment surely a straight pull would be the same than it chambers uh, around under a spring oh i was so sure it was section five i'm actually really now not sure um i do have quite a, a knowledgeable contact that um i, I tend to not annoy him with too many questions but it's been a while so i think i think it's about time um there's i don't know whether to uh, but basically this guy has an encyclopedia his hobby is firearms law an encyclopedia knowledge of firearms law and all the changes and this that and the other and like if i send it to him and it is under section five he will say black and white why it is or why it isn't um so actually that might make a whole watch watch this space i will 
you've doubted me enough to pursue it more so um probably w watch the space a full video will come out on it because well certainly if it is uk legal then watch this space um but if it's not i'll give you the black and white reasoning of of why but still yeah because even that storing energy and you know storing energy with a spring technically the straight pull rifles would be in violation or or is it a case here's here's an interesting thing maybe the straight pull rifles shouldn't maybe that's a complete oversight of the people that are building straight pull um you know yeah straight pull rifles or side charging rifles that in leaving the spring in there it's actually making them section five but the police well the police just don't know enough to really um maybe that's another question i can i can uh, ping to him as well like maybe straight pulls need to have the springs removed as soon as possible um you know and it has to be a complete manual operation i don't know it's it's yeah the, the whole thing with straight pulls and the springs because you're pulling it back but then you're pulling it back with the trigger not a charging because it's separate maybe that's why this would be prohibited because with a char uh, um a, a side charging or a straight pull rifle it's a separate mechanism but then it's still storing energy oh i, I i'm really bloody lost on that now but yeah interesting point thanks for raising those see comment above about propellant gas uh, the thing with that rifle is that it has never been demonstrated as an as actually firing and extracting a live round straight pull is fine it might as well be bolt action at that point bonkers basil it is energy imparted to a spring or other gas or any other energy storage device by propellant gas okay like this this is why uk firearms law is such a black hole of grayness um <laughs> Like, I don't know, maybe I should phone the proof house again and be like, what do you think? Would you proof this under section one? Um, <laughs> they would be like, well, could we give you a call back, please? Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna pin this guy um, an email after the stream. I'll try and remember and I'll get a definitive thing. Um, any rifle with a, with a chamber from which an empty cartridge case are extracted using energy from propellant gas or energy imparted into a spring so yeah. i was so sure it was section five but then there might be other elements of the firearms law from previous acts that would still cover it i i will i can't i can't say either way but i was pretty sure it was and you've now just completely doubted all of that section one essay shotgun firing slug is what they have to put on section five in essence but hey lots not shout about it <laughs> well yeah because slug is technically shotgun ammunition so yeah but, uh, but no i'm not going to say that i think you all know what i'm going to say when it comes to slug and shotgun they're not being able to have semi-autos but let's move on swiftly but you are manually pulling the bolt back to chamber around. Yes, but you're doing it with the trigger. Right? If you could have two trigger, but then isn't that just the lever release? But no, because the propellant gas is locking that back. Mm. Well, okay. I'll, I, I will just... Um, I just default to what was said in the Discord, which, which you know, spirit of the law, and yeah, okay, somebody brings in a hundred of these, yeah, that's it's just going to be the effect, the effect, the offensive weapons bill three They're not going to last 
I just it's I don't know why people get well maybe 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 it's good actually that there's still people with as, as much optimism out there to get excited about these things but I just look at them and I genuinely just go yeah yep yeah, it probably could be legal it doesn't fucking matter they ban it anyway <laughs> you know it's like I think we need to stop spending as much time and energy getting excited about these things and and maybe redirect it into getting back semi-autos <laughs> like because you know all those people that were maimed and hurt and killed by mars and leave release right um and you know all the crime that's been prevented since the banning of handguns and semi-autos like that's that's where the energy should go that's where i see but yeah if they are uk legal cool yeah it will be it will be nice while it lasts manufacturers are hesitant to make semi-auto air rifles even though they are there are a few on the market already or at least there were uh, funnily enough we had a whole conversation about this in in the office um i think last week about semi-auto air rifles and bb guns and th things like that and that is another just absolute clusterfuck of law like what you can and you can't have and you know and I think the crux of it, and, and again, I, you know, I'm, I'm always happy to be proved wrong. You guys do it fairly often. Um, is a semi, oh no, a full auto BB gun is section five. No, sorry. A, a full auto BB gun that the muzzle energy is above one joule is section five. But a semi auto Air, air rifle is not um and it really does come down to what again what you define a semi-auto and and the reason i say that semi-auto air rifles would be um, legal is because of air pistols there's a number of yes technically some of them are revolvers but you get the ones with the magazines that have that revolving sort of car um you know that that belt basically it's almost like in a way a belt fed gun so you know then is it well yeah still semi-auto but you can get air pistols that you can just you know you can put 20 rounds of them and get a pellet per pull of the trigger and again i know technically revolvers but all of that but again it's so this this is why it's so easy to end up on the wrong side of firearms law because like you can ask a thousand experts on it and you will get a thousand different opinions Uh, Derek P, the precess of the act is, in this act, self-loading is designed or adapted so that it is automatically reloaded. Note they separately, note they separately banned lever release. Um, so you say it's designed or adapted so that it is automatically reloaded. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I'm I'm gonna switch to optimism here. I'm still not a hundred percent on it. I'm way, I am way from from up um from a hundred percent. But I will I will switch to being optimistic rather than pessimistic about it. You've 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 all put a very good argument forward. Um. The answer is right there. Self loading center fire prohibit prohibited is it self like oh, i don't know let's let's move on i could spend the next e the, the rest of the um the rest of the evening flip-flopping between you should have seen the discussion we had about converting a straight pool to be cycled via an external energy source <laughs> being <laughs> what is that external energy we call this the humpo minigun <laughs> pump 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 oh that's that's being memed fuck it uh is a rifled shotgun barrel uk legal no no that that then becomes so the definition of a rifle so definition of a shotgun in the uk 
is a smooth board gun. Technically, a cannon is a shotgun. Technically. Uh, but a rifle in the UK is anything that has a rifle barrel. So, sort of a rifled shotgun barrel isn't really a thing because it would then actually just be a rifle rifled barrel um, in terms of UK law. So, um, it would be section one, but whether you could actually extract a fired and expanded nine mil case with just the force of your index finger on the trigger is highly debatable. Uh, so it's single shot. So it's it's definitely it's definitely section one, um, <laughs> and yet still to be able, and yet yet to still demonstrate this so this is one of the things with the um the repeated issues that people and and david thanks for joining as always uh david will know all too well about the issues of nine mil straight pulls now there are a number of companies that have running ones uh caliber innovations being one of them but the, the the nine mil round is just a bastard when it comes to straight pulls and and sort of the AR platform. So yeah, it it can be difficult enough with a whole bloody lever on the side, but then you don't know what mechanics are going on there. You know, um, Newton's what was it? Is it Newton's third law? Um, give me a large enough lever. What is it? Give me a large enough lever and somewhere to pivot um and i'll move the sun i think is that let me it's been a, been a while since i've got into my got into my physics uh, i want to get the right quote i want to I, I like these <laughs> give Oh, it was Archimedes, not Newton. Ha! It's been a while since I've done physics. Uh, give me a, a lever long enough and a, f a fulcrum on which to place it, and I shall move the world. Um, physics, yo. Uh, so yeah, you don't. Anyway, there's a side digression there. The you don't know what mechanics are going on with inside that gun you don't know whether um so one of the th things that i should do a, well, not necessarily do a video on this but I'll, I'll try and remember to bring a set home next week uh, and show you to the uh, show the, the show you guys it um at magload we use these things that we call parrots um and it's what we use for pressing in the magnets and the inserts so i think i have one yes i do don't tell connors um, so, um, for those of you that don't know, just quick, quick Maglo Plus uh, plug. Uh, this is the Nexus Pro uh, 8. So, the best loader we make, the Nexus Pro, um, and this is the smallest size that we make it in. But you can see all of the brass bits here. Uh, so, these, um, the, the main difference between this and the element loader is these are all 3D printed, uh, not your desktop squirty hot plastic 3D printing. It's about um, 150, 200,000 pounds worth of uh, machinery that that print them. Uh, but we just get the plastic parts in. So, so they're, they're made, we're trying to bring it all in in house at the moment. Uh, but we will just get the raw plastic parts and then we process them. So we precision ream them to get the, the best fit within the, I'm talking about the, the middles specifically. Uh, but we ream the tops as well and we've got to press these inserts in. Now, it's not the sort of thing that you could, like if you were to be able to apply enough force with your thumb to push these inserts in, you wouldn't have much of a thumb left. It would absolutely shred it. But we've got these parrots that using leverage, um, I mean, you can crush pennies with them. And we've done it a number of times. Like the, and they're only small. These, these things are not, you know, it's not like, you know, bloody, pair of bolt cutters they they are they can't you operate them with one hand they look like a standard um like pair of pliers really just with a with a bent nose and the amount of force that you can 
you can apply with these things are absolutely incredible. So if you've got the same sort of mechanics going on in that gun, it is quite feasible that you would be able to apply that sort of force using leverage to extract a round. So I think it's possible, but all you guys are saying that it's it's been shown a number of times and they still haven't fully released it. Well, we see they're obviously working on it. You know, the at the end of the day, the first the the hardest thing is to have the, the thought of it. Well, you can argue either way, but they've got the idea. They've got a general prototype of it, so they've they've sorted out maybe the mechanics. So maybe it's just a few tweaks left to do until we we see it. Either a pneumatic solenoid actuator or even a cabled foot pedal pedal. Oh, Jesus Christ. Like, the whole Discord's going to prison. Like, I know that's rich, but you guys, I could just... <laughs> I can imagine you at Bisley, just, like, with, with a fucking foot pedal. <laughs> yeah, it's not, you know, it's not done by the gas. <laughs> and then just the blue lights. <laughs> just, like, spirit of the law, anybody? A semi-automatic shotgun is a center fire. Yes, um, but a shotgun is not a rifle. Uh, so it's a center fire rifle. That's what is pro prohibited. Center well, no, it's not about... Sen no, a semi... It's a s center fire semi-automatic rifle that is prohibited. A center fire semi-automatic shotgun is not. Smoothbore AR-15, let's go. Yeah, they tried that. It was called a UTAS. Not many of them about anymore. I'll just leave it at that. Dan's having flashbacks, by the way. Oh, yeah, anybody, if you want to get Dan to shut up about, you know, his mod thing, just remind him that he did actually go and pay his own money and bought a UTAS. Sorry, Dan. He also bought a, J9, uh, a, J, a JM930. Just get that one out there as well. Um, and also a Chris Defiance. You don't really have a tra good track record, do you, buddy? In indicating loopholes in current law will likely add to the next wave of legislation and laws to restrict further. Shouldn't the focus be on de-restricting specifics like pistol and full bore semi-autos? Absolutely, fucking Luke Lee practical armory. This, you know, maybe you've just tuned in, but I literally said this like five, ten minutes ago. I really do think instead of instead of coming up with ingenious things like Mars and lever releases, which they've just used us to, you know, used it to force us down an ever narrowing tunnel of firearms ownership. Yeah, just uh, actually, hang on, like that should have been the argument, right? That that's what Basque and the NRA, ha. <laughs> LRA having the argument, yeah, all right. But anyway, that's what they should have had. That's what that's what the argument should have been. So no, no, no we don't care about you banning these because actually, we want our semi-autos back. <laughs> like, if you think the Mars and semi and lever release are the issue here, um, you've got another thing coming because we want the semi-autos back. Like that's that should have been the argument there. Like, hang hang on a minute. No, sorry, you're taking away something because you took away something that we should still have. Can you be... Can you be arrested for a spirit of the law violation? Or... I don't know. I don't... Th I'm going to say I don't think so. But of course, you don't need to break a law... To have your certificates revoked so again this is something that certificate holders have to bear in mind is that you don't necessarily have to stray and you know i'm not going to say whether you you know it's not about whether you agree with this whether it's right or wrong but you don't actually need to break the law or have a criminal record to lose your certificates right it's that's uh, and and that's what you'd be playing with. And I think I know why you're asking that question because it's like, oh well, well, what's the risk? Well, the RFD 
or importer that brings them in, well, they're risking their import export license and um, their firearms dealership, right? And any certificate holder that goes out and buys them are risking their certificates, right? Because if the judge, if the judge on the case goes absolutely not, you guys are taking the piss. Um, I recommend to the police that they remove all of your certificates for all the piss taking you've been doing, trying to get around our semi-auto ban. That you, you, you know, regardless of whether you're going to prison for, you know, a spirit of the law violation or not, you're going to end up losing your certificates, and you know, losing your certificates for being in possession of a gun that its legality is questionable. Yeah, good luck declaring that on any future applications. That's like, you know, that, 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 yeah, that's not, in terms of things, you know, saying like a lot of things that people worry about when they write it down on their application, the police aren't actually worried about. That's the sort of thing that police are worried about. <laughs> oh, guess, guess which one of us has an FAC and doesn't. It's, it's just an old Daniel. Come up with something original. It just... It's like water off of a duck's back by this point. What about a belt-fed AR, but each link has a chamber portion that is a round preloaded into just like a revolver? So basically, a really, really big revolver. Um, no, um, an AR, a belt-fed AR. But each link is chambered. I, I well, first of all, I don't know if that's actually possible. Ah, no, how they would get you on that one. Um, I mean, techni technically, maybe, maybe. Um, but how they would screw you with that one is each individual link would be a pressure bearing part. So you would have to go and get a slot for every single one of those links. Like with the um, Alan Westlake muzzle lo loading revolvers, each of the cylinder... Uh, each cylinder is its own pressure bearing part. Now, it's not uncommon to see somebody with an Adam Westlake and they've got three or four different cylinders. But the whole point of trying to get an AR-15 AR belt fed gun is to have at least 25 or 30 rounds. Trying to justify having 20 or 30 slots for all, uh, yeah, just, I think, prat I mean, maybe technically it would be legal, but practically it's just not going to go um, just going to go anywhere. However, somebody did make, um, and they have gone very quiet. So they've they've either been black bagged, or the police have given them a very um, stern talking to. Uh, but it was a belt fed under. Uh, bullpup and it was a bullpup there we go well it's still on so have you seen this so this is in the UK um, it it's, is UK legal, but obviously it's not semi-automatic. It is an underlevel rifle. Well, it's a bolt-fed, that's what I said, a bolt-fed underlever bullpup. Yeah, but you never see one of those. And if I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure this was filmed at Froome. Maybe Tom, I did see Tom pipe up. Um, or Mr. Bullet, Bullets and Pixels. Um, I'm pretty sure this was filmed at Froome. But like, fair go. 
Like, what what an absolute lad. Um, so that's the kind he of started with. Like, I'd highly recommend going and watch it because he goes into the whole development process. Uh, an interesting fact. Oh, there you go. So it's a Ruger um, 9644. Designs the whole... The, the rest of it is absolutely incredible. Uh, but he goes through, yeah, all 3D printed links. <laughs> it's just like... Can you, can you can you imagine the look on that guy's FEO's face? You did you did fucking what? You made you a what? Oh, I don't even know. <laughs> like, uh, but yeah. So custom Ruger 90, 9644, ball pup belt fed forty four, <laughs> the ultimate lever gun. Yeah, I I can't disagree with him. I think that very much is the the ultimate lever gun. absolute lad um but this was a while a while ago yeah june 2020 oh definitely a lockdown project then but i'm pretty sure i showed this on the stream previously but yeah as far as i'm aware uk legal um and he's done other stuff as well so it's adf projects and designs if you if you want to go and check them out custom Built ball putt stop for long barrel pistol. Yeah. Yeah, it does it does um it does a few crazy things, but yeah, that's that's what I think he's most most known for, definitely. Like you know, that's the thing, is like all these new firearms laws and restrictions, it just leads to a whole level of you know innovation, doesn't it? Like we the Brits I mean the Brits have always been pretty good at engineering and innovation and things like that, but I don't know. It just it just forces us down another <laughs> a, a completely different path and and to quite literally think out of the box really. Gez Roberts, what is an FAC? A firearm certificate. It's what you need to be able to own a section one firearm within the UK. Uh, so, Bullet and Pixels, thanks for confirming. He's a member of Froom. It's based with Ruga. He said he's not he's not quiet. Just doesn't shoot much. Um, uh, Life of Riley. Glad it got you thinking. Uh, yes, it did. Um, and I mean, the thing is, the reason I was so confident is because I mean, like Connor's, and in terms of the mechanics of guns and and the laws around that um is 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 maybe best well I, i'm certainly stronger on the law side of things and he's stronger on the mechanic side of things but he took one look at it and just went no it's like it's self-loading and, and connor's is pretty convinced that it's self-loading but we will um again i'll send i'll send it to uh to the guy that i know and i will get his his quite literal expert opinion on it Why didn't he make it a pump sliding front handle instead? Because um, that would have been illegal. Uh, so uh, f uh, as well as semi-automatic, full bore or full bore or centre fire pump action rifles were also banned. Um, so and and the definition of a pump action is something with a reciprocating forend. Um, I think that's what. Why didn't he make it a pump sliding the front handle instead? Uh, no. So if you have, regardless of what the mechanism is doing behind it, if you have a reciprocating forend, that is what is defined as a, as a pump action. Um, that's why we have seen other, um, like something that's been tried by a, a number of people now is having a front charging um, rifle. So there, it's not got a reciprocating forend, but it, it it's a front side charging rifle. So it's a lot more ergonomic because you don't have to do all of that fucking bollocks. Like how the CR, C, CR, 
civilian so csr guys jesus um how the csr guys do that i i don't they like they're like they pull it and they've still got their finger on the trigger it's like it's, oh, it's, it's all kinds of distorted in in their hands but um yeah obviously you want to keep your if um your, your non trigger finger on the fore end and you want to keep your hand on the trigger uh, or you know hand on the grip and, and on the trigger so that allows you to do it you have to adapt the grip on some of them but you can still keep your uh, hand out front you can um work the action and your hand then naturally goes back to the right position it's you know a fairly fairly uh you know interesting idea i think we tried it out with um cobalt kinetics a number of years ago um, and unfortunately they it just wasn't a project that was big enough for them to get invested in so um i believe there's a couple of places in the uk that are working on that at the moment what rounds with that firing um david Giddle, as he said 44 magnum Derek P pump is a is reloaded by the manual operation of the fore end or fore stock of the weapon um, or reciprocating fore end. Uh, so some something to look forward to and to end I think on a positive note. We have the British shooting show in a couple of weeks now. Uh, like when when was the last British shooting show? Was it twenty twenty? February 2020, right before all of the lockdowns. Um, so we've had a good two year break. Well, obviously it wasn't last year. Yeah, because the, the British shooting show was right before all of the all of the restrictions um, and was the only show that year. Whereas last year, it was the only show that wasn't able to, oh no, the Northern didn't go ahead, did it? Um, so they just missed out again. The Northern was a little bit too. So the Northern's been royally fucked. Like literally there hasn't been one you know, there wasn't a northern shooting show in 2020 and there wasn't one in 2021 um so even more to look forward to for the northern shooting show but uh the british shooting show it is well i think by numbers it's the biggest um in terms of square footage i mean the northern shooting show it takes over like a whole bloody estate um but yes it's the first show of of the year for the shooting community it's held at the uh, nec if you want to go and get your tickets and get bit get booked um i do actually need to get in contact with these guys because i've completely forgotten to see if they let me have a um a press pass um but worst case i'll be be queuing with everyone else but it's well worth the visit and because of how long well short after the shot show you tend to see a lot of the things maybe franklin armory will be there we don't know but you see you tend to see a lot of the the new products that have come over from shot shows so if you're interested in seeing the new products if you're interested in getting face to face with you know some of the biggest names in the industry uh, then you know, go to the to the british shooting show uh, it's the 18th to the 20th of february so literally you know only a couple of weeks away now and from what I've heard, it's completely packed. So there's still tickets, there's still, um, you know, general general public tickets to buy to, to go and visit, but there are no exhibitors space left. They've completely sold out all the exhibitor space. And I think if I heard correctly, they're in two or three halls this year. So it's it's growing and growing and growing. I mean, that's of course why they made, I know, and, and to be honest, I did prefer it when it was in Stonely. I know the Stonely facility like isn't the best, but there was something more, I don't know, agricultural about going to, to Stonely for the British shooting show. So when it, I know there was a lot of backlash, a lot of people that didn't like when it moved to the NEC. They said it you know lost character and oh, it's been here for years, uh, but it's it's because it's grown so much. They needed the space they needed the facilities of somewhere like the nec to continue doing it and it has allowed it to grow i mean uh was it yeah last uh, the last show they had the airsoft surgeon uh, airsoft match uh, action air match 
so which was pretty much run to like a level three or a level four IPSC match, but they ran it as a level one, and that's because they had a whole hall next to it not being used, or it was used for more of the um, behind the scenes of the show in terms of access and, and other facilities that I need to provi provide to the store holders, but they had that space. That wouldn't have been possible uh, at Stonely with with how populated um, they were inside of those halls. So, you know, it allowed being at the NEC, it allowed something that has exposed thousands of people to the sport of IPSC, the UK PSA, and even uh, Action Air. So yes, uh, probably the question that um, um, David Kiddle shame it was so expensive for small traders. This is, I know this is a constant comment of of people, and you know to be honest, it was a big commitment. Um, you know, a lot of people have been asking if uh, if Maglo's going to have us down there. We don't, and it's it's a combination of things. Not not just because it's a lot, it's a big financial commitment. Um, but we've only like really only just recovered um, after like Black Friday and Christmas and all that. And bearing in mind, uh, myself, Cat, and Paul were all off for ten days during that period um, with with a certain flu. So it took us a lot longer to recover after the um, the target shooting show, and then Black Friday, and then all the all the sickness and absence, and then Christmas and New Year's and all that. And it was like it would just knock us straight back. So, but yes, that, that's a maybe one of the big criticisms that we've seen of uh, other smaller businesses. But it's at the end of the day, they are a business. We are in a commercial space, and uh, the the fact of it, the bigger companies, the the bigger stands, um, they have the money to be able to throw at it. I mean, you know, that's why you get people like. Zeiss and Swarovski and you know the the big importers and distributors like GMK, Edgar Brothers, um, Viking and all that you know they have massive massive stands but they also have massive massive budgets so they they can afford to do that um, but I, I it's very much my goal um, for for Maglo to be at every single show next year um, I believe probably need to talk to to Paul not that Paul a different Paul um, believe Magload will be at the Northern Shooting Show and of course will be at the Target Shooting Show but it's my goal for next year for Magload to be um, at the British Shooting Show. I think we just need to maybe plan a bit more um, <laughs> ahead for that uh, but we will be there. I, I, I will 100% be there Friday and uh, Saturday. I don't know about Sunday because there is a KFC shoot there uh, on the Sunday so might come back um i'm pretty sure connor's will be joining me for the friday and saturday i think our plan is just to stay the one night to head up uh friday morning friday is usually the quietest day so that's probably where i'll do a lot more of the filming and then saturday i'll like properly go and enjoy it myself um and hopefully meet loads of you guys so yeah i'll be there the friday and the saturday and potentially the Sunday, but that's not a hundred percent. We may we may stay up there for longer. Don't know. See how, see how it goes. Maybe the Northern Shoot. I would I would highly the you know there's a big push. You know the the British Shooting Show does sort of set itself as like the flagship show, the premiere show, and and I would. You know, it, it very much films feels like they go more of the, the the premium side. That's not I'm not saying that the Northern Shooting Show or the Target Shooting Show in any way isn't premium, um, but there is certainly it feels more of a drive from the Northern Shooting Show and the Target Shooting Show to facilitate smaller, um, more cottage businesses uh, and also organisations and clubs. Um, but again, they're they're businesses. The NEC is not a cheap place to rent. <laughs> like you know, so they've they've got they, they've got a they've got to pay the bills. They've got to keep the lights on, right? Uh, but it's always been a great show f from from my perspective. Always like going there. There's always something to look at. Yes, it's very shotgun heavy, but at the end of the day, the majority of the market here in the UK is is shotgun. So 
you know that's that's sort of what you would expect but there is certainly last time there was a slightly larger practical element uh, and you know in terms of going and buying the gun i i don't know many people that have gone there and not found the gun that they wanted to buy whether it, whether or not it's at the right price is another matter uh but but yeah i'll be there friday and saturday there will definitely be a video of some description don't know exactly what it might just be a general look around video um with a couple of extra you know stand and talks at some at some stands so uh, yeah if you are going uh, and you're there i i will let you guys know the closer to the time if i if i end up doing the sunday but if you are about and you're there and you see me or you see corners come and grab us we don't bite not unless you ask us to very nicely uh but yeah come and say hi like it's honestly um like an, an immense privilege and um it's just always amazing to see the people the other side of the camera like something that well maybe it is quite you know obviously there is a camera here but you all look like a camera to me i mean you, you know people might take the piss out of how I, I look you've got one giant eye as far as i'm concerned uh, con concerned so it's actually nice to put the sort of human element to it chat to you guys it's why it's why i tend to actually have to do three days because um i do enjoy talking to you guys a little bit too much <laughs> in in person um and don't tend to get as much filming done as as required but yeah come and say hi i usually have some patches and swag on me uh which i'm always not happy to to give out and uh and and spread the love uh but but yeah and and the biting if you want it but uh but yeah if you see us come and um come and say hi i do always threaten to do some sort of meet up um i don't know you you have to just keep an eye on the english shooting facebook page because it really is just non-stop when we go to to shows even when we're not exhibiting at shows it's just just non-stop on your feet stand to stand you know stop and feel like we're always doing something it doesn't feel like we've got a second to breathe uh but maybe we're trying you know to know buddy up with a stand and and use their space for a little bit um yeah to hold a little meet and greet or you know it might say like right i'm going to spoons for lunch coming out oh god that could be quite interesting going to spoons and giving the number out and seeing what you guys order as long as somebody orders me chicken wings, I'm I'm fine. Northern Shooting Show, many firearm license department there undertaking variations on the day slash interviews, which is absolutely fantastic. Again, um, you know, they have the space there to be able to offer that out to the firearms licensing department. Did did the British Shooting Show not have um firearms departments there previously? I know the target shooting show has. I know the the northern shooting show. I think was the first show to to do it. Uh, lick, yes, we're we're lick. If you um, yeah, th that's right. If you want your guns to be blessed by either Connors and I by licking, more than happy to do that. There is a small donation required. Um, <laughs> looking forward to catching up with you both. Uh, likewise, Brett. Um, will Alex be attending? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I guess you mean Bluefield Sports, Alex. Um, I don't know. I don't know what his plans are for the show, uh, but Connor's Connor's and I will be there. We may even try and get Paul up there as well. Um, so if you see a small lad about half the size of Connor's and I um, carrying a load of bags, <laughs> then that's probably Paul. <laughs> bullets and pixels do lick though oh oh mark mark you were you were you questioning why he said lick or were you asking for a lick because you might have got a lot more than you bargained for there um and on that licky note um before before i head off hit the like button um i can't say it enough and i will keep saying it it makes a huge difference to the channel it helps you know they see the youtube it sees the analytics see people engaging with the video so the like does make the difference it's free if you've watched like more than 30 seconds of this video depends which 30 seconds of that of this video that's that that would make a real big difference but 
if you've watched more than 30 seconds, then there's no reason you shouldn't hit the like or hit the dislike. It's all engagement. Um, and I don't even see the dislikes now. So you might as well hit the like button. Um, and also, if uh, if you're new to the channel, we do this every single week, half 7 p.m. UK time, every single Thursday and every week there's a video. Of course, the last video that went out was all about the very, very technical aspect of UK firearms law in converting shotguns between different sections or different classifications of our firearms law if you want to learn more about firearms law in that regard go and check out uh, that video but hit that like button hit subscribe hit the bell i remembered it for once hit the bell little icon do it although youtube notifies me on all the other channels that i watch anyway but anyway if you hit that bell you'll be told when we go live on a live stream so you never miss that again and you'll be notified when there are uh, new videos but um david uh, just as a quick are you shooting KFC Sunday? Um, I will be there in the morning, um, but we're actually going to be leaving slightly earlier to uh, head off to the AGM. Um, and also, I need to do some filming with Connors for Magload while we're there. Please, if we can have a little bit, little area of the quarry, that would be great. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, I don't think I'll be able to shoot the match. I might. I'm more than happy to have a little bit of a blat and maybe just you know beat beat everyone on a couple of stages while i'm there but we'll, we'll see but anyway um i hope you've enjoyed the uh the stream i hope you all have a fantastic week ahead hit that like button hit the subscribe button and of course as always hope to see you soon